So we're given the function f of x equals x minus 1 times x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x plus 19x. And we're asked to find the critical points and to find where the interval of the function or intervals of the function is uh, decreasing and increasing. Decreasing, increasing. So first things first, take the derivatives and set them equal to 0. So if we take our first derivative. Using the product rule, it's first times derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. So x minus 1 times 3x squared plus 6x plus 7 plus 1. So just 1 here times this. So you just have x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x, plus 19. Okay. Multiplying this out, we have 3x cubed plus 6x squared plus 7x minus 3x squared minus 6x minus 7 plus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7x plus 19. So 3x cubed plus x cubed, we have 4x cubed. And we have 6x squared minus 3x squared plus 3x squared, so we have plus 6x squared. And we have plus 7x minus 6x, 6x plus 7x. So that's plus 8x. And then we have minus 7 plus 19. So plus 12 is f prime of x. Okay. So now you look at this, and this is a little bit harder to see points where x is 0. So if we dabble around with it, we'll find that when x equals negative 3 halves, then this equals 0. So in other words, when x plus 3 halves is a factor of this, or if 2x plus 3 is a factor of this, and this factor is 0. Because remember, if we separate it out, as long as one of the parts is 0, then the whole thing is 0. So if we did long division of polynomials, which looks like this, pull out the 2x plus 3, and then we this underneath. 6 squared plus 8x plus 12. 2x plus 3 goes into this twice. I mean, 2x squared times. Uh, yep. So we have 4x cubed plus 6x squared. This is 0. Pull this down. This doesn't go into it. So plus 0. And then if you pull in the 12, this goes into it another 4 times. So plus 4. So 8x plus 12. Perfect. Awesome. So if you see, the factors of this equation here are 2x plus 3 and 2x squared plus 4. Or two times x squared plus two times two x plus three. Okay, so now if we set each part equal to zero, we have x squared plus two equals zero. That means that x squared has to equal negative two. And so ha x has to be the square root of negative 2. That comes out too imaginary. It's complex. It's not real. We don't want to deal with it. So that doesn't count. Now we have 2x plus 3 equals 0. So we say 2x equals negative 3. So x equals 
minus negative 3 halves. So for our function here, we have one critical point, and it's x equals negative 3 halves. All right, so now we want to tell is the function where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. How do we do that? We take some points that are close, well, close enough to um, x equals negative 3 halves, and if and then we set it into the derivative. If it's greater, it's increasing. If it's less than, if it gets smaller, it's decreasing. So let's say we pick the point negative 3. Okay. So if we did f prime of negative 3, there we go, we have 4 times negative 27. So that's uh, 108, negative 108 plus 6 times 9, so that's 54. Then we have 8 times negative, sorry, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24, and then plus 12. So clearly we can see that is less than zero. Okay. So that means that as x gets um, more negative, it's decreasing. So our interval in which it's decreasing is negative infinity to negative 3 halves. Okay. All right, so then let's say we pick another point, x equals 0. All right, so if we did f prime at 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 12. Obviously, 12 is greater than 0, so that means it's increasing as x gets larger. So that means our interval in which Our interval in which our function is increasing is from negative 3 halves to positive infinity. That's your answer.